Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Love is a many splendid thing, saying the four aces. Or is love as rocker Pat Benatar sings a battlefield? Or as the rock group Forder, which I know a lot of you listen to every day, <laughs> is love a head game? Or maybe Dolly Parton. Is somebody you like to listen to? Love is like a butterfly. Let me speak of this love from a human perspective, and let me speak of God's love. Now, I would argue that human love is oriented, directed, driven from our minds most of the time. Confused and driven by our individual needs and desires at other times. Love to others is organized, directed knowingly and unknowingly by our view of the world. Who we love, how we love, all of that is directed. All the many splendid things are directed from within. And what we are learning as we learn more and more about the human body is that love comes from the center of our minds and is driven by impulses, by nerves, bodily feelings, even the chemistry of our gut and what we ate this morning. All of that directed at our relationship with others, sometimes by the mere glance at another, at their color their hair, or even to hear their language. The rock group Boston may have had it correct, love may be more than just a feeling. It is as if to say that when God designed us, we were designed with love in mind, complex structure of mind and body, the ability to reason, uh, the will to do and to be and to love to do so in particularly in community. Love is part of our reflective identity, is part of our greater whole as finite beings, ones that are birthed and live and die. We exhibit a finite love, a limited love. We are created though so to draw us naturally towards others and also towards God who is love. The Gospel today invites us to consider God's love and how it might be different, and to be curious about how God's love might be different from our own. Theologians speak of God's nature as love. This love of God is an outpouring, the Scripture tells us, and Jesus, for us Christians, is the embodiment of God's love, literally. One might say the perfect image of God's love. Jesus says he has loved us in our passage today and invites us to love not as humans do, but as God does. To love others as God loves us. We should be curious about this. Where does Jesus teach us of this love? Uh, he shows us examples of this love. How does he embody this love? Well, of course, he tells the story of God's love when he speaks of the worker in the vineyard. That's a great one. And how, you know, the workers have come every time of day. And no matter what broken road we learn that you have lived, hidden secrets you have, it doesn't matter when you arrive. All of God's love will be yours. This is the parable of the prodigal son, is it not? That no matter what you may run off and do, and squander all of God's love in the beginning, when you return, there will be more of God's love for you and an embrace. God's love, God loves God's people. God loves the tribes we live in in this world. God loves all people. All does mean all. This is the message. It's the message of the parable. The 
shepherd. It's the message of the Good Samaritan who reaches across tribal lines to love somebody completely different than themselves. Jesus gives us examples of God's love when he turns water into wine, speaks of abundance, when he heals uh, uh, the broken, when he eats with sinners, when he loves the lost and those who are being condemned by society, when he loves the faithful and he loves the unfaithful as well. Through his actions, Jesus also embodies love. He embodies love on the cross. This is different than teaching us or showing us or giving us examples. Jesus embodies love. He gives himself, his body, his bodily form to love and for the love of us. He gives himself and his body not just to see a cross, but to see the cruciform broken body of Jesus upon it. It is a bodily sacrifice that reveals God's love most of all. We might think of Paul's second letter to the Corinthians chapter 4. He says, we always, you and I, carry in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our bodies. Or as he says in 1 Corinthians, Paul reminds us that our brokenness, our frailty and sin is revealed to the world and others around us when we cannot discern the body of Christ and the other person. Our human way of loving is not a thought or an idea alone. It is how we approach our life. How one lives with family and friends. How one approaches strangers. In other words, Jesus' love is embodied by our love. Uh, uh, by other human beings. By other human bodies. If we turn back to our passage, we are invited to do the same as Jesus, to abide in God's love, to do as Jesus has shown us, taught us, how Jesus has embodied it, to give our whole self to God. That means our bodies, everything that is a part of our life, just as Jesus gives us all of himself. And that we are to give our bodies and ourselves to others. To love one another. And that this is how people will know for Jesus' followers. You see. We're to lay down our life for others. That means laying down our opinions of others. Laying down our ideas about how, how God may or may not like or love others. It is to lay down everything we think to embody a God who loves without boundary because of God's eternal nature. This is the kind of love Jesus is asking of us. This is the invitation that human uh, that we have to overcome our human design. That through relationships and narratives and bodily feelings in our mind, that we have to overcome human love to love others as God loves us. And that you have been chosen. This is the best part. This really isn't about you choosing God. God chose you by your very creation to do this. You were meant to do this. This is how you are made. And it's why you get angry and frustrated and upset when you can't do it. Because you know the sin that is in us. And you see how you can't love as God's, God loves. And we see that we don't lay down our lives and our opinions for others and for those around us. And the more we can distance our bodies from each other, the better. Not just in the pandemic way, but in the political way. So that we don't even have to believe that other people exist. Or that they have their own story. Or let alone, and even worse, that God loves them. In the same amount that God loves us. In our own brokenness. Whew. We 
kind of just like, I'll go to bed right now. That's, just, that's a lot, right? That's a lot. The task, though, is not to pretend like that isn't the story. The task for us as Christians and followers of Jesus is to know that's the story and to recognize that we can't do it and that we are sinful and broken and that we are limited and that we don't love like God loves and we are to return, as it says, we are to return to God and ask for forgiveness because we can't do it. And it is in that moment where we realize the incredible leveling of God's love for each of us. But it only comes by being honest about our failure instead of blaming others for theirs. What you think, what you want, what you believe, what you desire, and hope, what you believe is owed to you has nothing to do with this. I would suggest to you that how you answer that question of understanding that God loves you, no matter how broken you are, no matter where you have been and the road you've traveled, to recognize the frailty that we amplify for one another, and to understand that it is that love that is it is a splendid thing. And much more than a head game and a battlefield. And more than a feeling. That God's love provides us grace when we sin. Because of our frailty and our frail love. God does not judge, you see, as humans judge. And in the face of such godly love, we recognize grace. And this, you and I, may actually become icons, images, bodies of God's love in the world. As a great mystic once said, it is in the finite, in our brokenness and inability, that we actually are drawn deeper into God's love. So, Love as God loves. This is the commandment. It's not an invitation. Love as God loves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, 